So welcome to the first video in the material design course. In this course we're going to be looking at how you can create apps for Android using Google's material design. So if you're not already aware material design is what powers the upcoming version of Android being Android 5.0 or codename Android L. But it's also used on current apps but it's becoming increasingly popular due to its uh, really nice animations and its really good looking design, very modern design. Uh, using flat colors and fat, flat schemes. So this course is going to show you how you can incorporate this into your PhoneGap app and we'll be looking at some of the elements you can use and stuff like that. So I'm on the polymerproject.org site right now which is where you can find everything to do with material design and I'm on the demo section right now and as you can see it's very uh, animation heavy. They're really working on the animations here. Personally I really like them. I think they look really good. Make it look a bit less boring. Uh, so this is material design, and you can see all the checkboxes here. We've got radio buttons. Everything has animations, absolutely everything. Even inputs have animations, so if you click on that, you see they animate as we click on them. And there's just a bunch of things here. I'll leave a link in the description so you can have a look at this yourself. So in this course, we're going to be looking at how you can incorporate these into your app. And there's very few apps that are doing this at the moment, it, but it is becoming increasingly popular. There are a few apps now using the material design and with Android L releasing soon it's going to become even more popular you're going to want to start incorporating this into your apps so to start off we're just going to go to the polymer project home and that's a polymer-project.org and you're going to go to get polymer right here and you can see you can download a starter project you can do that if you want it gives you a base app based on the social network like a read-only one um, but I'm going to just go get the paper elements and this just gives you everything you need to get started. And I'm going to download the zip version. You can also get the Bower version or the GitHub version. But just to keep things simple, I'm going to go with the zip one. Although, if you know how to use these, go ahead and use them. And now that's downloaded, so I'm going to open up the archive. And obviously, Mac automatically extracts them. If you're on Windows, you'll need to extract the zip folder. So we can just remove that archive.zip now. And we've got a folder called components. Inside of components, we've got Bower components. And inside of here, we've got all the paper elements and everything that we need to get started with material design. So what I'm going to do is on my desktop, I'm going to create a folder and I'm going to call it material app. It doesn't really matter what you call it. And what we're going to do is drag this components folder into that material app. And now we can close the finder here and it's going to minimize Chrome. So open up that folder. Inside here, you should have your components. My text editor of choice is brackets. But if you're using something like Sublime or any other one which doesn't run a web server for you, you're going to have to set up a web server environment. So what Brackets does is it automatically with the live preview, it automatically creates like a web server and Material Design only works on a web, on a web server. So you'll need to get a web server sorted if your text editor doesn't already. I would suggest if you're on a Mac using a program called MAMP or if you're on Windows, a program called WAMP. So in brackets, I'm going to just open up this material app folder and it's right there on my desktop and I can just open that up. And inside of here, I've got my components folder with the bowel components. What I'm going to create here is a new file and I'm going to call it index.html. Has to be HTML, not HTM for PhoneGap to understand it. So in our index.html, we're going to create a doc type and set this to HTML. And this obviously just declares that it's HTML5. But then we're going to create a HTML tag. And in here, we're going to have our head tag as well as a title tag. And I'm going to leave the title empty for now. We're also going to have a body tag and then close it off there. And this is where our content's going to go. If we head back into Chrome, uh, you'll see on the download page, they give you this code snippet here. This is to import all of the paper elements into your app. So I'm going to just copy that and paste that in my head right there. But what you will notice is the folder structure is slightly different here because we've got a bower components here in the way. So we're going to put bower underscore components forward slash and then paper elements paper elements dot html. We also need to add in a JavaScript file. So this is going to be script and then src set this equal to components forward slash bower components forward slash platform forward slash platform.js and then close that off and then that's all we need to get set up with the material design 
So what we can go ahead and do is in our body, I'm going to create a paper-element. And you might be wondering, well, what are these tags? Well, these are the tags that Polymer uses. It creates its own tags for each of its elements. So rather than having like div with a class of, and then paper element or something like that, it instead just creates its own tags, which can be pretty useful. It makes things a bit easier. So if you come from Bootstrap, that might be a weird thing for you or even foundation or anything like that. That might be a bit weird for you. It was a bit weird for me as well, but yeah, that's how it does it. So just create a tag and this should be actually paper button. We're going to test out of a button just to check that the material design stuff works. So in between these tags, what you're going to put is just your button text. So I'm going to put test button. Save this and I'm going to launch it up in my live server. And here you can see the button and when I press it, I have in fact got the animation. What, what you'll notice though is that the font isn't actually correct. This is actually using Times New Roman or whatever, whatever the default font is. And what it should be is actually Roboto. Roboto is the font used by Android, a really nice flat style font. So what we actually need to do is apply a fix in this. So this is going to be done by going style, and this is in the header, style type equals text slash CSS, and then close off that tag. And then I'm just pasting this in here and I'll explain what it does in a minute. This is just a quick fix used in the example project that they give you. And what this does is it's applying to the HTML and the body tags. So that means it's just applying to the page pretty much. So we're setting a height of 100%. This is so that if we have a footer, it can anchor it to the bottom of the page rather than having floating like midway through the page. If you don't understand that, don't worry about it. It'll be fine. The margin is because browsers automatically add a margin and padding around the edges of the screen. So we're going to set that to zero just to remove that margin because it wouldn't look good in an app. The background color is pretty self-explanatory. This is a really light gray, which is used in material design. And then finally, the most important part is the font family. And this is Roboto Draft, which is included with this whole components pack. So don't worry about it. And that is just setting everything to have that font. So I'm going to hit save on that. And you see the font is updated and the animations still work. So if I put it down to 100%, it looks really nice. And yeah, everything's working. We could also create colored buttons. So we can do this by adding a class. And I'll set this equal to colored. You can call this what you want. And up here in our styles, we can add paper dash button and then dot colored. And set this to have a color and I'm just going to paste that in there. And this is just a bluish kind of color. So that is like the primary button. So if you've got a form and you've got OK and cancel, you might have cancel in gray and the OK button in blue because blue is the primary color. So save that and you can see now it's in blue. And also the animation has changed to blue as well. So it does this for you and it just makes it all fit in together. So what we can do if you're using Chrome, which is recommended, is we can go into the developer tools and then press escape and bring up emulation and press this little phone icon here to enable it. And I'm gonna select the model of the phone as a Nexus 5, it's quite generic. And then hit refresh. And then it shows you how your app will look on a phone. So I'm gonna leave this video here. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to comment, rate, and subscribe. And I'll see you in the next video.